Hi, this is the advanced course. The horse isn't born to carry a rider on its back. Therefore, it's important that the horse learns how to carry you in the right manner. When the horse carries his own weight and that of the rider evenly over all four legs, the horse is collected. He carries the rider using his back muscles and has a gentle and steady contact with the rider's hand. Here a cloud is collected. If the horse's back is hollowed and his head raised, he's not collected. Then the rider ends up on the horse's spinal cord instead of being carried by the horse's muscles. A half halt is exactly what it sounds like. A half halt. With the half halt, you tell the horse that you're about to do something new. For example, ride a circle. The half halt is also useful if the horse is going too fast and you want it to slow down. Another reason for using the half halt is to produce collected work by making the horse push its hind legs further under its body. The rein back is performed from a square halt and after a certain number of steps you usually ride him forwards again. When Lisa makes a rein back, she lets Cloud know that she wants him to move and closes her legs. Right when Cloud is about to respond by moving forward, Lisa closes her hands and Cloud will release his impulsion by moving backwards. She softens the hands when Cloud obeys. When she wants Cloud to go forward again, she gives with the hand and squeezes his sides with the legs. Here Lisa and Cloud make a turn on the forehand. As you can see, Cloud's forelegs tread on the spot while his hind legs pivot around them. A turn on the forehand is usually started from walk. When I say, turn right on the forehand, Lisa should move Cloud with her right leg, which then is the inside leg. The right rein, the inside rein, should work with the inside leg. The aids are interacting. Lisa takes a gentle hold of the right rein as she moves Cloud's hindquarters with the inside leg. The left leg, the outside leg, makes sure that it doesn't go too fast or too slow, and the outside rein helps the inside rein in maintaining the horse's posture. Cloud's hindquarters should turn half a circle until he's completely turned in the opposite direction. Then Lisa walks forward again. To turn on the haunches means that the horse moves in a circle with his forehand around the hindquarter. The turn is started from walk, and it's important that the horse keeps walking on the spot with his hind legs. Cloud is slightly flexed and bent in the direction of the turn, with the inside rein showing the way. The outside rein helps the inside rein in keeping the posture and provides support. Lisa moves her seat in the direction she wants Cloud to turn. She brings the outside leg back behind the girth to prevent the quarter swinging out. Then she turns Cloud around, mainly using her weight from the inside rein. Turning on the haunches at the canter is called a pirouette. Therefore, turning on the haunches is sometimes called half pirouette at the walk. When Cloud yields for the leg, this obviously is called leg yielding. The horse moves both forward and sideways, but a little more forwards. The horse holds his neck and body straight and is bent slightly away from the direction in which he is going. When Lisa squeezes the inside leg, Cloud moves sideways to the right. The outside leg makes sure that Cloud moves forwards and that the hindquarters don't swing in front. The forehand is always a bit ahead of the quarters. The inside rein maintains the bending and the outside rein straightens the horse. This is referred to as flexion by the reins. Here we see Lisa and Cloud riding shoulder in. The horse's hind legs are still going large and the shoulder is just inside the track. The horse works on three tracks, as you can see. Lisa's inside rein leads the forehand within the track, flexing Cloud's neck. The outside rein establishes the right bend in flexion.
and regulates the flexion. The horse is bent around the inside leg of the rider. The outside leg is moved a bit back. It holds the hindquarters in position and makes the horse move forwards. Watching Lisa and Cloud, you will see how the horse moves with his four legs on the track and his quarters inside the track. Cloud moves on four tracks. His forehead is pointed straight ahead. Lisa uses the inside rein to bend, while the outside rein controls the degree of the bend. Lisa uses the outside leg behind the girth. It is a lateral aid that tells Cloud to move sideways. The inside leg keeps track of the horse's forehand. It's the controlling aid. The inside leg also keeps Cloud moving forward. It's a driving aid. Now we're going to see Cloud and Lisa perform a flying change from left canter to right canter. This movement may vary from horse to horse. This is how Lisa performs it on Cloud. She rides a calm, slow left canter. Now we have reached the advanced dressage. Not all horses can perform piaf and passage. The movements are so difficult that the horses must have a natural ability for them and be properly trained. Passage is a very collected and springy trot. It looks like the horse is dancing. Piaf is an even more collected trot on the spot. The horse isn't moving forward at all. The four legs are raised as much as in passage, but since the horse isn't moving forward, the hind legs are lifted slightly less. Lisa and Cloud are actually practicing passage. Watch! By now you probably know that the horse's paces or gaits are walk, trot, and canter. But there are also variations of each gait. There is the free walk, which means that the horse is on a long rein and takes long stretch steps. At medium walk, the horse should be collected. It should still stretch out, but the steps are somewhat shorter. There are different kinds of trot. The working trot, medium trot, and extended trot, and different kinds of canter. Working canter, medium canter, and extended canter. When the horse is at extended trot or canter, it should take as long steps as possible. Now we're going to look at the difference between working trot and medium trot. First we see Lisa and Cloud at working trot. Now they're at medium trot, and you see that there's an increase in pace and that the horse pushes more with his hind legs. Cloud also stretches a little on his neck. Now Lisa and Cloud are at working canter. And here you see medium canter. It's the same procedure as a medium trot. Cloud increases the pace and pushes more with his hind legs. At higher levels of dressage, one also rides at collected trot, where the highest degree of collection is passage and piaf. Collected canter also belongs at the advanced levels. Collected canter is a prerequisite for canter pirouettes. Here we see Cloud and Lisa at a very collected trot, namely passage. There are different kinds of fences, upright, oxers, or triple bars. There are many variations of these. Here you see the most common kinds of fences. When the horse is jumping a fence, you must follow his head and neck with your hand so that you don't pull at his mouth. This is called to give with the hand. You must also raise your seat so that the horse's back is able to move during the leap. This is called a hunt seat or forward seat. 
Always look ahead at the next fence. When you are in the air over one fence, you should already look for the next one. You must also be able to judge the distance in between the fences, so that you can shorten the length in the horse's stride if necessary. Otherwise, the horse might approach it wrong, and you could have a knockdown or a refusal. A practice fence is a small fence that helps the horse to a comfortable takeoff at the larger fence that is coming up next. When riding Cavaletti, the poles are placed slightly above the ground to make the horse really lift its legs. The poles may also be placed on the ground. It's important even for a show jumper to be on the aids, collaborative, and flexible. The work with a horse that isn't done over fences is called flat work. A cross pole is a small practice fence to help the horse jump at the center of the fence where the cross is at its lowest. In a training competition or a local competition, it's quite all right to wear a sweater or a jacket. But when entering a regional competition, you're required to wear a riding jacket, which is a close-fitting jacket. Underneath the riding jacket, you wear a white turtleneck sweater or a white collar shirt. With the shirt, you wear a white tie or a white stock, a kind of scarf. You must wear breeches. Most riders wear white or light-colored breeches. And of course, you're wearing a hard hat. When jumping, you may wear a padded vest, over or underneath the riding jacket. You are also allowed to use a whip and spurs. If you are riding a pony, the spurs mustn't be longer than 15 millimeters. When riding dressage, you're only allowed to use the whip in the practice area, not in the competition. You don't need spurs in easy C, but otherwise you should wear spurs. If you're riding a pony, the spurs must have a blunt end. In cross-country riding, the rider wears a long sleeve sweater or shirt and regular breeches. You must wear a padded vest over or underneath the sweater. A pony mustn't exceed 14.6 hands. Otherwise, it will automatically qualify as a horse. You and your pony are going to compete with other ponies in your pony's category. Which category a pony belongs to depends on its height. There are different classes with different levels of difficulty for the riders competing in show jumping. The easiest class is called Easy D, followed by Easy C, Easy B, and Easy A. From there, the intermediate classes take on. There are also different classifications that imply rules regarding jump off. There are different classifications with different jump-off rules. Classification A. Riders with an equal number of faults receive the same placing. Classification A, 0. When several riders have clear rounds or an equal number of faults, the fastest rider wins. Classification A, 1A. If several riders have clear rounds or an equal number of faults, there will be a first jump off. The winner is the rider with the least faults and the best time. Classification A, 1B. If several riders are double clear or have an equal number of faults after the first jump off, there will be a second jump off. The winner is the rider with the least faults and the best time. Classification A, 1C. Having passed the finishing line after a clear initial round, you go straight on to the jump off. So the finishing line for the initial round becomes the starting line for the jump off. More rules are to be found in the regulations. This is how the faults are counted in show jumping. Knocking down a fence, four faults. First refusal, three faults. Second refusal, Six faults. Third refusal, elimination. Fall of horse or rider, elimination. If you want to ride a dressage test, you must learn a dressage program by heart. There are different levels of difficulty. 
The easiest level is usually Easy C1, followed by Easy C2, Easy B0, Easy B1, Easy B2, Easy A0, Easy A1, Easy A2, Easy A4, progressing to intermediate level. In the Easy C1 program, you should know how to walk, trot, and canter. You should be in control of your horse and know how to ride the school figures correctly. In the advanced tests, the rider performs flying change, piaf, passage, and pirouette. During the test, a judge awards marks for each set of movements performed by you and your horse. Higher level competitions might be judged by up to five judges. Once you have completed the test, you will receive a protocol from the judge stating your marks for each movement and school figure. Eventing includes dressage, show jumping, and an endurance test. The endurance test at the lower levels is a cross-country test with natural fences. The advanced levels also include long-distance riding and steeplechase, which is an oval arena or an open field with brush fences. There are one day, two-day and three-day events. The three-day events are very demanding on the horse, which has to be in absolute top shape to endure it. The classes in eventing are Preliminary This class is for those competing for the first time. The level of difficulty is somewhat below easy C. Novice You may enter the novice class when you've completed the preliminary class with a satisfactory result. The level of difficulty equals easy C or slightly above easy C. If you're riding a bee pony, this is the most advanced class you're allowed to compete in. Intermediate. The intermediate class is for ponies. The level of difficulty equals easy A. If you're riding a C or D pony, this is the most advanced class you're allowed to compete in. Intermediate class B. The Intermediate Class B is for horses and includes dressage at level Easy B. The show jumping and endurance section is somewhat more difficult. Intermediate Class A The Intermediate Class A is for horses and riders who have completed Intermediate Class B with a good result. The level of difficulty is now considerably increased. Advanced Class to enter the advanced class for horses, you must have completed intermediate eventing with a good result. When you have registered at the show office and shown all necessary documents, it's time to go to the arena if it's a show jumping competition. First of all, you should study the bird's eye plan of the course. Then you walk and assess the turns and distances. Walk the course exactly as you plan to ride it. In case you qualify for jump off, it's important to study that course as well. You aren't allowed to walk the jump off course after the initial round. The fences are numbered, and flags on the stake show the direction in which the fences should be jumped. A red flag should be on the right side, and a white flag on the left. Once you've walked the course, it's time for warm up. Warm-up is the important practice before entering the arena. For a dressage test, you practice the movements the way you do at home. Preferably, you ride the whole program. For show jumping, practice fences are found in the practice area. There are usually three kinds of fences, an upright, an oxer, and a low fence which height isn't altered. When entering a competition, you mustn't forget to bring the following documents. The Green Card A green card is compulsory to enter all competitions other than training competitions. Horses License To enter a regional or national competition, you need to obtain a license for your horse. Height Certificate If you ride a pony, it's important that you can verify the height since ponies compete in different categories. Rider's License To enter a regional, national, or international competition, you need a rider's license. 
Vaccination Certificate The horse must be vaccinated against equine influenza, which is a very contagious disease. If you perform well and qualify in a competition, you receive a rosette. The rosettes have different colors depending on your placing. Now you've reached the end of the advanced lesson. Test your knowledge before going on to the competition. Good, that's correct. Good, that's correct. Good, that's correct. Sorry, that was wrong. Good, that's correct. Good, that's correct. Sorry, that was wrong. Good, that's correct. Sorry, that was wrong. Good, that's correct. Good, that's correct. Sorry, that was wrong. Good, that's correct. Sorry, that was wrong. Good, that's correct. Sorry, that was wrong. Good, that's correct. Good, that's correct. Good, that's correct. Good, that's correct. Well done. Now you've completed the advanced course. Lead your horse to the stable and take good care of it. If you want to compete, register at the counter just inside the stable door.